Good morning to everybody. Good morning. It's warm and dry in here and not rainy, so it's a good place to be, isn't it? Amen. Got a uh, few announcements here, not a whole lot of announcements. Uh, uh, Joe Bree loves son-in-law's mother. Say that correctly? Her name is Evelyn Easel. She is in St. John's Hospital. She, she's elderly, correct? And she's got a severe UTI and thinks maybe a brain, but they're not real sure what all, correct? Not sure what all, but she's in pretty severe, severe uh, uh, case. So let's, let's remember her. Let's remember the family. And, and uh, the only time you go to the hospital, it, it's, it's not, there's, there's just not anything good coming, not good being there. Let's remember them and, and things that are going on. Uh, there is, uh, there's going to be no, ba no ladies' Bible class this week, which has been on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, Christmas, but there'll be no one, none, none. That's on Thursday, right, Don? Yes. Yeah, they meet on Thursday, yeah. So no, no ladies' Bible. Y'all, I'm sorry. I just got these, and I'm just trying to go through them. And this is my announcement. It's my handwriting on one side. And, so I apologize for that. None the following uh, Thursday. Okay, and none the following Thursday either. So the next two Thursdays, there'll be no, no ladies' Bible class. Uh, uh, the Christmas lunch that we have here will be held on December the 5th. And if, if we could, try to, try to get a count. If you know you're going to be here for that, it'll be right after services in the morning. So, so if you know you're going to go, raise your hand or... That, that, let me count. I'm just kidding. Y'all just, I don't know, we, Bailey, what are we, where are we at, Bailey? What do we want to do on that Christmas dinner or something? We need to get a count of something? I mean, we'll stick something on the board and just write your name down, something, and that way, just helps out on the idea of knowing how much food to prepare, and we don't have a lot left over, and we don't have nobody hungry. But, uh, so, so anyway, so write that down, and, and uh, you should be there come to it. There's no reason for you not to be there. Come in there and let us all talk to each other. Bring me a present. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please, Mark. I'll give you a list after services. Uh, men's breakfast will happen, and, and I don't get to go to this. It's Tuesday, right? Monday. Men's breakfast is on Monday, but it, it's holiday week, but they're still going to have the men's breakfast. They're still going to have game night tomorrow night. The game night will be going on tomorrow night. Now, this, this, and, this and here, this is out of normal, so everybody listen to this. Tuesday night, we will have services on Tuesday night here. Normal time, 6.30. We will cancel our Wednesday night service, but we'll have services on Tuesday night. And I'm, I'm sure we'll get a call one. Right, Bailey? I'm hitting Bailey back there, y'all, bad. We'll get a call one on Tuesday, please. Make sure everybody remembers Tuesday night because that's not that's not normal. So it's not, you know, it's so Tuesday night services. So so we'll have a Tuesday night service at 6:30. So everybody try to remember that. Uh, got one new little announcement this morning. Toppy's not in. Where's Toppy at? There she is. No, oh, she's right there. We're gonna. Uh, uh, the 11th, the 11th. We're going to do a Christmas light deal on the 11th. We're going to eat somewhere, and we're going to, we're not 100% sure what, where, why, but if you would like to go on that, that was just, she and I talked about it this morning. I will be your driver, so you got to sign a release before you get on the bus. <laughs> but uh, uh, so so that, that uh, the 11th, if you want to go to that, we'll go eat dinner. We'll go look at some lights. We'll have fun. If we have more than 25 people, you can follow behind the bus. Or we'll, go, we'll take, make two trips. How's that sound? <laughs> but uh, so, so if you want to go to that, that would be a lot of fun. So everybody sign up for that because we'll need, we'll need, we'll put a board back there and we'll do a call one. We'll do all that stuff. But uh, sign up for that and that way we know how many we've got. All right. Anything else? Anybody? Anybody. It is good to see everybody here. It's a rainy morning. You know, usually people don't want to get out in the rain, but uh, just thank goodness you didn't have to get up and go to work this morning. You might have been outside. You have to get up and go to church. 
But uh, uh, let's go to God in prayer. Our dear Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for all the, 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 the uh, I don't know if you can use the word general, but the general blessings that we receive every day that we overlook so many times as blessings. We pray that you'll, you'll be with us, be with, with the Chandler Road Church, all the things that are going on. We pray that you'll be with all the folks that's going to be traveling, doing things over the next month or so during the holidays, that things will go well. Pray that, pray that uh, uh, folks' minds will be on God and on church through Thanksgiving and Christmas and things that are going on and, and uh, uh, help us to, to uh, jump on that fact and, and give you to them. We pray your, your, your blessings on uh, Evelyn that we announced this morning, that things will go well with her, that, that the doctors will get her figured out and get her back in, in, her, in her good health. Again, we pray that you'll be with us in the worship this morning. Help us to uh, uh, sing out, pray out, and, and uh, enjoy worship and give you all the glory. In Christ's name, amen.
Does everybody have a communion cup? If not, raise your hand and we'll get you one. I'd like to read from, <coughs> excuse me, I'd like to read from Mark, the 14th chapter, starting at verse 13. And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he himself will show you a large upper room furnished and ready and prepared for us there. And the disciples went out and came to the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And then we go over to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after saying, uh, excuse me, in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this day, for the opportunity we have to come here and 
to worship you and sing praises to you and to come around this communion table. And dear Lord, we just thank you for the sacrifice of your son that you sent here to shed his blood and to die on the cross. And we thank you for this bread that we're about to partake of, which just is a symbol of your son's body that he gave up on the cross. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Shall we pray? Our dear Lord, we're just so thankful for the sacrifice of your son, his willingness to go to the cross and to shed his blood for us. And it's his blood that washes our sins away. And, and dear Lord, we just thank you for this fruit of the vine, which just is a symbol of that blood that he shed for us. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Yeah. 
better be leaning, say leaning on my Jesus, I'm leaning and on the everlasting arms. Oh, what have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning and on the everlasting arms. Stand on, but I have blessed be with my Lord so near me, and on the everlasting on, I better be leaning on my feet. last night and just have a, a encouragement word for the kids. The kids praised the Lord last night. Amen. No, y'all don't hear me. Amen. The kids praised the Lord last night. Amen. And then I come this morning. Y'all feel me? Come on. No wonder Jesus says, be as little children. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you all in the church, we act so sophisticated that we don't even open our mouths and sing. And God's been good to us. Isn't that what we're talking about today? Thank you, Lord. Amen. No, isn't that what we're talking about today, you all? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So thank you, Lord, for allowing me to sing praises to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a tongue. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a voice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't have the audacity. To sit in those pews right. and not open your mouth as good as God has been to you. There you go. Am I right? Yeah. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. This is, this is what church is about. This is what worship is about. And I was trying to show the kids last night that they are our, they are our future. They are our future. And they had a great time in the Lord. And I just got so caught up into that. And I thought, man, why do we not have such a great time when we get older? No, 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 no. You ought to be wise. <laughs> See that? You ought to be wise. We ought to know that we come to praise the Lord and praise the Lord. Right? Amen. Come on, Mickey. Hard party. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Open your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I just want to talk this morning, church, about learning to thank God in every season. Learning to thank God in every season. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Um, I want to give you all this pre-Thanksgiving meal to feast on this morning because Thanksgiving will be over with on, after, on next Sunday. So I want to give it to you today. And in Deuteronomy chapter 8, there's a scripture, brethren, that, are, that has often drawn my attention back to all that God has done for me. Amen. And he helps me keep my perspective, church, in the craziness of life. Right? He helps us to do that. And how many know that we are in a special season for our church? How many of you all know that? 
Okay, all three of you, praise God. <laughs> the rest of you will get it in a minute, okay? We are, brethren, we are in a special season for our church. We are intentional, amen, about leaving seasons and entering seasons, right? So, so with that thought, just know we better leave this year, brethren, in a place of great expectations and also with great gratitude. Yes. Amen? Great gratitude. This scripture, brethren, that I want to serve to you today is going to help us with that. It's going to help us to have great attitude when you see how good God's been to us. Moses says in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and the verses 7 and 9, he says, For the land, for the Lord your God, is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and, and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, out of whose hills you can dig copper. Now, brethren, I, I like that. He didn't say, brethren, that the copper would be on top of the hills. That's at the surface level. But he says, though, church here, if you're willing to dig in, you can find what you need in this season. Amen? Now, now comes the caution. What's the caution in the verses 10 through 12? When you have eaten and are full, when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes which I have commanded you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full, and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. See, brethren, that's the problem with some of us. Amen? We've settled down. We used to be enthusiastic about God's grace, right? But, but we start taking him for granted when we get settled, right? But I don't want to just settle, brethren, just because God satisfies me. I want to stay hungry. I want to stay hungry. How about you? Don't you want to stay hungry? Amen. Okay, you all, uh, that's a question. <laughs> I'm seeking an answer. Yes. Do you want to stay hungry? Yes. Yeah, open, it's okay to open up your mouth. It's okay to open up your mouth. Do you want to stay hungry? Yes. Amen, brethren. Amen. You ought to want to stay hungry. And then he says in the verses 13 through 18, And when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which every fiery serpent and scorpions and thirsty land were there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flint, flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with the manna, which your fathers did not know, that he may humble you and that he may test you to do, to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to his fathers as it is this day. Amen. Is that in your Bibles? Yes. Amen. Now, I want to talk about, brethren, I want to talk this morning about graduating in gratitude. All right? All right? Graduating in gratitude. Going to another level, church. See, your next level is one praise away. That's why we talk about praise. Amen? That's why I mentioned praise, right? right? Brother, you need to understand that, that your next level where God wants to take you is one praise away. In a sense, church, 
we're watching a graduation ceremony for the Israelites. They still have some battles ahead of them before they enter the promised land. But Moses is telling them, church, it's about to happen, but before you go there, make up your mind that when you get there, you won't forget who brought you there. Amen? Amen? Amen. And he must know, brethren, that Moses had to know they had a tendency because he led them for 40 years through the wilderness. Millions of people. A tendency, brethren, that God provided for them to let their preferences to allow them to miss God's provisions. If they didn't like, brethren, the way the food tasted or the schedule with the food came, they were quick to complain under Moses' leadership. So he says to them, you're going to, to a better place, all right? Your best is before you. On one hand, brethren, he's prophesying the potential of the promised land, but he's also pointing to the proclivity, brethren, of people who entered the promised land to forget the providence once they receive. Okay? So what's going on now? So as, as, so as Moses does this, he goes through these kinds of things they're, they're going to experience. And he tells them, be really careful because God's gifts alone are not able to give you joy. Okay? God's gift can only bring you joy, church, when they are joined together with your gratitude. Amen? Now, you know how you can be surrounded by all these blessings, all these relationships, all this provision, all this goodness, brethren, all these opportunities, but if you don't know how to turn the blessings into praise, yes. amen, yes. it will turn into pride in your heart, brethren, and your life will never be filled with joy because your heart will have holes in it, yes. right? And Moses speaks to this. See, he comes to give us, brethren, a commencement address to say that maybe what you need in your life isn't the next level of accomplishment, amen, or the next level of accumulation, but the next level of appreciation for what you have that will set the stage, brethren, for you to make the most out of what you accumulate in the future. Yes. Okay? That's what Moses is trying to tell the people. That's just what he's trying to tell us today. Because, brethren, if you grow in gifts and you don't grow in gratitude, what have you gained? Right? If God gives it, but you don't know what to do with it, it won't make you happy. Right? See, brother, some of you, if God gave you a husband right now, you don't like yourself enough to unwrap the gift and appreciate it. You see me? See, brother, they have done studies to show that happy people are not the ones who have the best of everything. Come on, somebody. But those who make the most of everything they do have, you know, you know this, brother. You know it. You see, you, you've met people with less than, uh, that seem to have more joy. Now, have y'all noticed that? Yeah. People who have a little, they seem to have more joy than us who have a lot, right? When it comes to gratitude, brethren, you have to practice gratitude. Because gratitude is not natural. See that? See, gratitude without practice may be a little like faith without works. It's not a lie. So we don't, we don't so much want to know do you have a grateful heart, brethren, but do you have grateful habits? There's a difference. There's a difference. Grateful habits. Because your joy, brethren, is not produced by what's in your heart. It's produced by your habits by which you build your life. That's where it's at. The Bible teaches us something very powerful and very simple. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
Brother, it says, it says, it's very basic, very basic, church. If, if, if you like my shoes, say so. Amen. Make sure, brethren, when God blesses you, you say the blessing. Amen. Amen. That's my first point. Say the blessing. Say the blessing. Lord, I thank you for the food. Lord, I thank you for the job. Lord, I thank you for just a reasonable portion of health. See, brethren, this is our first level. Y'all see that? This is the foundational a level of gratitude and perhaps real faith right here. Say the blessings. I think, brethren, there's power in teaching your kids how to act at the table if they can. Amen. 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 Moses says, when you eat, say the blessing. Okay. All right? You all, what are you teaching your children when they get at the table, when they're eating food? Do you say, don't eat that food? Moses said, when you eat, say the blessing. Moses said, brethren, you better learn to sing at the table. This is while God is blessing you, while God is pouring out provisions for you, you ought not just sit there and act like you earned it. Right. Am I right? See, brethren, or act like you deserve it. I cannot understand why, brethren, some people come to worship and cross their arms the whole time. I can't understand it, brethren. Amen. Uh, 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 because, because when God brings you to the table and feeds you his faithfulness, when God brings you to the table and feeds you his words, how could you be so dead when you've been so well fed? Right. Y'all see it? Yeah. We're talking about a new attitude, brethren. We're talking about the next level here. See, brethren, that's how it ought to be. See, how could you not thank the Lord? You better say something. If that food is good, open up your mouth and sing. You know, you know our kids growing up, brethren, when, 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 when they were hungry and they would eat dinner, they would start singing <laughs> at the table. We knew they liked their food. And know anybody know what I'm talking about when it's real good to you? Y'all know anything about soul food? Yeah. Huh? Do you? Soul food is a feel-good food, okay. right? And when you're eating soul food, brethren, it does something in your soul, and you know, and you wanna, you get happy about it, don't you? Mmm, these neck bones are good. Mmm, these collard greens are good. Uh, Y'all know anything about that? Oh, these oxtails good. I ain't never had an oxtail, but I know it's good. It's good. It's good. I know it's good, brother. I poured a soul food. I'm ready to get that. That's on my bucket list. It's to eat some oxtails. Praise the Lord. Oh Lord. It is good, brother. The principle, though, church, lies in verse 10, where Moses says, when you have eaten and are full. Y'all see that? Yeah. This is after you get the blessing. This is basic, church. This is the kitty table of Christianity, and most people never even make it here. So God gives them seven days a week. 24 hours a day, and they won't even return two days, two hours to give God to come to worship and thank him. Huh? Y'all see it? See, this is a time to have an inward in inflection, brethren, to look at our own selves. See, because verse 10 says, when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Now, y'all see those two words, for the, in there? For the good land, for the, y'all see that? This is the basic of praise, brethren. This is where it starts. This is what you're trying to teach your kids to do. Thank you, mama, for the food. I enjoyed it. Thank you, God, for the use of my limbs. Thank you, God, for my eyesight. 
You just thank him, brethren, for whatever you can think of. And let's do some more of the, the for the, brethren. It's good practice to, to, to practice on a basic level here. Thank you for my nose. Amen. It allows me to smell. Amen. Thank you for the clothes on my back, Lord. Thank you for the roof over my head, God. Thank you for the wife that encourages me, God. Thank you for the running water that came out of my sink like magic when I turned it on today, brethren. Thank you for the people in my life who believe in me rather than giving up on me. Thank you for the crazy family, amen, that you let me have, amen. All the dysfunction and everything, and it's teaching me and de developing me. Thank you, Lord, for the air condition and heated building we come to worship in. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom to be able to come to worship without persecution. Thank you, Lord, for the brothers and sisters sitting all around me, helping me to praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the grace you gave me when I fell last week. Thank you, Lord, for the prayers you answered. Thank you, Lord, for the, thank you, Lord, for the, thank you, Lord, for the, thank you, Lord, for everything. That's what Moses is teaching at the kitty table. Thank you, Lord, for thee. Y'all see it? Yes. Perhaps happiness, brethren, isn't about accumulation as much as it is about appreciation. Yes. Amen? But this world, brethren, does not market appreciation to us. You can't even get through Thanksgiving before they fill in your newspaper with stuff you don't need that you have to buy on Thanksgiving night. Brethren, they call it Black Friday, right? So I Google Black Friday, and, it, and, it, and this is what I've learned, brethren, that the term Black Friday did not grow nationwide until the late 1980s when merchants started to spread the red to black profit narrative. Black Friday, brethren, described as the day stores began to turn a profit for the year and as the biggest shopping day in the United States, and we fell for it. And we fell for it. Yep. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> At least the millennials did. The generation Y, brethren, and digital natives were born approximately 1997 and 1995, and it has gotten bigger and bigger every year. Can we not? Just have one day to be grateful for what God has blessed us with before we start going after more stuff we don't need. Right. Just one day. Just one day. Amen, brother. God wants you to know, brother, that he wants you to know, can we just have one day, one season, just to say thank you for See, God is gracious, church. God's more gracious than the utility company. Right. Amen? Because the utility company makes sure every month that you appreciate them. Right. <laughs> Am I right about it? Amen, brethren. And if you fail to show appreciation, they'll stop providing power. Right? They'll, they'll give you a chance to rectify and, and, and remedy the situation. It will be a little invitation. Amen. You'll get in the mail. And brethren, an invitation to appreciate their faithfulness. Amen. It will say something like this at the top. Past due. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Past due. See, brethren, we can understand that, right? Well, what about when your praise is past due? Amen. See, brethren, maybe that's where... There hasn't been any power in your life lately because there hasn't been any praise. And God says, I, I can't get any power in your life because you won't release the praise. Okay. Yeah. See, if you want God's power, you have to give him the praise. Y'all see it? Is, is your praise overdue? Yes. 
Anybody's praise overdue, brother? Are you walking in blessings that used to be your prayer request and you haven't even stopped to circle them and say, thank you, Lord? Huh? Oh, Lord, help me with this. Help me with that. And the Lord helps you and bless you, and you forget to praise him. Y'all see it, brethren? Moses said, thank him for the good land. Thank him when you give. When you bring an offering at the end of the year, you say thanks. When you graduate from an attitude, brethren, of gratitude to a way of life of grateful, you say thanks. Thank you, Lord. You have to really graduate, brethren, from the kitty table. Y'all follow me? See, I don't want to be that kind of Christian who only thanks God when he's serving me. All right. I don't want to be that kind of Christian, brethren. To graduate, we need King David because Moses was teaching the people to relate to God on a provision level. David was a little bit different, church, because of his experience, his, uh, his provisions, <coughs> right? He was raised up as a shepherd in Jesse's house to be king anointed by Samuel. He had remarkable ability, church, to remember where he came from. And it, and it always made him thankful and made him grateful even though his life was very dysfunctional. He was driven, brethren, by a sense of turning to God who had given him all the blessings to him. And David comes in to give us a deeper appreciation, a deeper understanding of mature gratitude. That's what David's going to show us, brethren. It's not a mature gratitude, brethren, to thank God for what he's given you that's just good manners. Amen? So David comes along and he says, I want to move you from the kiddie table to the banquet table. Right. Y'all hear me? Yes. This, 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 David, who was, who was not only a subject to the king, but a king of the people who had spent some time as a shepherd. David knew while Moses' brethren is teaching the people to rely on God on the most basic level where he says, church, when he blesses you, remember him. When he blesses you, obey him. When he keeps his covenant with you, keep his commands that it may go well with you. Church, that's basic. Y'all follow me? That's basic. David steps in and he takes it a little more deeper. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Am I right? I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and leaves me beside the still waters. Have y'all heard that before? Have y'all heard that before, brethren? See, 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 maybe you heard it at a funeral or at a time of mourning. David wrote this in a valley. <laughs> See, see, that's the deal, church. He wrote this thing in a valley. Yet he says something very interesting in Psalm 23, 4. And this takes us to the next level of praise right here. He says, even though, oh, y'all see that? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and their staff, they comfort me. Moses, brethren, teaches us how to thank God for the. All right. Okay? But David comes along and teaches us how to thank God even though. Amen. See it? Y'all see it, brethren? Even though. See, this is a graduated form of gratitude. Here's the remedial level. Thank you for the. But this is the place where you learn to praise God, even though. Right. <laughs> Y'all see this? Brother, even though. This is where, brethren, we can have all hell breaking loose in one area of our life, but say, it is well with my soul. Amen. Am I right? When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot you have taught me to say, it is well even though. 
my heart is broken. It is well, even though I lost some people. It is well, brethren, even though I'm going through something. It is well, even though. Y'all, can y'all get with me? Even though, brethren, the kitty table is where you learn to thank God for what you can see. But the mature table is where you learn to trust God for what you cannot see. Y'all see it? Yeah, that's the mature table, brethren. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. Now, church, that's one thing for Professor Moses to tell us to thank God for the good land. But now we have to decide what kind of Christians do we want to be. Are we only going to thank him for the food? Are we only going to thank him for our finances? Are we only going to thank him for your spouse? Or will you also thank him even though I'm single? Where do you want to sit? Where do you want to sit? The church, I'm only going to thank him when I see the evidence of his presence. No, even though recognizes his presence and the presence of his enemies. See, brethren, this is a stage of praise where you're no longer thanking God for the provisions only, or you carry that over you carry it, brethren, and you're still grateful for the provision, that's a starting place. Amen? But now I'm thanking him for his presence. All right? Yeah, you're going to need this, brethren, if you want to be a big boy and girl. And you don't want to be a baby, and you're going to have to learn to sit in the mature seat and learn to eat with enemies all around you. Amen? Amen? Because at this table, David said, God isn't the only one seated. I've got enemies all around me. Psalm 23, 5, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my insecurities, and in the presence in my deficit, and the presence of my addictions, and the presence of my confusion, and the presence of what I've lost, and the presence of the threat, brethren, that I won't make it. In the presence of my enemies, I'm looking straight ahead. Amen. Y'all see, brethren, see, when you learn to have a heart of praise in the presence of your enemies, you set the table. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You set the table. Show them. <laughs> oh, wrong one. <laughs> I missed that slide, didn't I? Okay, go back. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> Write that down. Oh, because cause, cause my, the one helping me with this, she's perfect. She's on point. She's on point. I just didn't have it there. But now you got it. Write it down. Write that down. Set the table. Set the table, Set the table brethren. That's important to know. Set the table. That's what David said. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And if you can walk with God in darkness enough, depending on the light that he showed you, brethren, in the last season, you learn to see your enemies as a sign that it's time to eat. All right. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a church in here this morning because y'all would be whooping and hollering if you really knew what this meant. Am I right? See, brother, when we get to enemies, we think, oh, Lord, help me. No, 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 brother. This is a time to sit at the table and eat. Right. right? David said, God made my enemy serve me my entree. God made the things that conspired to take me out, lead me to the place. He was bringing me in two, brethren. I've got a seat at the table. I'm a big boy. I can handle trouble. I can handle stress. I can handle tests, brethren. See, I can handle it, but what about you? Are you thankful for your trials and tribulations? Amen. No, really, are you thankful for your trials and tribulations? Are you thankful for the provisions God blesses you with? Amen. Are you thankful even though? 
even though, see, I'm just thankful because God, brethren, has been good to me. And so, so he lets us grow up, church, because God knows the plan he has for us. And he takes your seat at the mature table. Y'all see it? See, brethren, this is not an easy message. This is a crock pot Christianity. Amen. It may take a little while, but it's good. We know it's going to be good. Amen. Who's thankful this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's thankful this morning, brethren? That's what being thankful in all things, good things, bad things, and different things. I'm just thankful. Just thankful. Just thankful. Church, don't, don't act like God owes us something. But come in here and say, thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Okay. The clock didn't wake you up. God woke you up. Am I right about it? Thank you, Lord, for all of the provisions. Thank you, Lord, for my enemies. Thank you, Lord, for that. But even though... I don't have what I think I need. I'm going to thank you anyway, God. Even though folk don't treat me right, I'm going to thank you anyway, God. Even though I don't have money in my pocket, but I know you're a great provider, but they call you Jehovah Jireh, Jariah, Jariah, because you are the God of provider. You will provide. I want to just thank you, God, for just being my God. Amen. Thank you, God. See, brother, we've gotten so we've gotten so selfish in this great United States of ours. We just want everything, just everything. Ain't, ain't, we're not content with anything. I, you know, I want the better car than somebody, the bigger house than somebody. You know, uh, uh, how I'm gonna get some more money quicker? Work. You want some money? Work. That's a blessing from the Lord. He says, if you don't work, you don't eat. Am I right? So thank him for your food. Thank him for your job. Thank him for blessing him, brethren. See, thank him for the, it's the remedial. That's the kitty table. You got to get to the mature table, the banquet table. Lord, even if you don't bless me with this, I know you're able. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus. To die on the cruel cross of Calvary for sinners like you and I. We don't deserve to be sitting here. This is an honor. This is a privilege. Don't act like God owes you something. Don't come in here, brother, and act like you got an attitude. Am I right about it? It's been good to you. Don't come in here and act like, well, uh, I always want to go through the motion and get up out of here. Don't do that, brother. Don't act like. Don't put nothing before God and act like God is going to bless you. He can't do it because he's holy. Stop playing with God. Stop playing with God. Thank you, Lord. You know, if we can just uncross our arms, we may even give him a praise. Y'all see what I'm saying? Y'all see how we are, brother? We sit here all smug. And, well, I made it. You ought to be glad I made it. No, you ought to be glad God has some favor over you. See, brother, when the church can have this kind of attitude, that's when God can use us. He'll bless us, brother. We got to be thankful in everything and every season. Everything. Every season. See, brother, we're moving out of this season. We're getting ready to go into another season. This season was the kitty table. Now we're moving to the banquet table, okay. Challenge Road, Church of Christ. Amen. Amen. Y'all feeling that? Yes. No, no, really. Y'all feeling that? Yes. Yes. I hope you are. I hope you are. Because God gets all the glory. Amen. Amen. 
Don't act like. You can just give him a couple of hours a week and you think you've done your part and you want him to bless you still. Well, God, I gave you Sunday morning. Bless me. Bless my children. Bless my job. God said, what if I only gave you one day to bless you? Y'all see the commitment? Yes. Church of Christ, that's the commitment. I'll tell y'all what, I was out there, those kids were so fired up. Fired up. I told them they are our future. And they believe it, brethren. They believe it. Isn't that right? And we get old and cantankerous. We don't even want people to sit beside us. But we ought to say, thank you, Lord, for just bringing me here. Yes. Anybody want to say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Not thank you for, but thank you even though. If you're here this morning, and I really hope, brethren, that you take this message to heart. Thank you, Lord, for thee. Thank you, Lord, even though you have a seat at the table with your enemies all around. And you say, thank you, Lord, because it's time to eat. This morning, if you're here, if you're here, we want to we wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. But this morning, if you're here, every day is Thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. We don't just wait for one day to thank the Lord. We thank him every day. Amen. If you're here this morning and you're not a child of God, you ought to say, thank you, Lord, for providing a Savior. And you come, brethren, by faith, believing that Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God, willing to repent of your sins and confess them before men and be buried in the water of grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. He'll raise you up to walk in the newness of life and he will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the other hand, brethren, <coughs> if you are a child of God and maybe you just been so into yourself, so ungrateful, Always asking God for things. Have y'all ever noticed that? Have y'all ever noticed in your prayers it's, it's more God, please? More God, please, Lord, please do this. Lord, please do this. Please do this. Why don't you try this sometime? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. And Lord, if you don't thank me anymore, you've blessed me enough. Thank you, Lord. Try that on. Try that, brother. Try that. Because, see, you can't have any peace if you, can, you don't connect your provisions with your gratitude. So this morning, somebody feel like coming and saying, thank you, Lord. I have not been what I need to be, Lord. Now, I've taken you for granted. I've taken the church for granted. Y'all see? See, brother, no way, as good as God's been to us, no way, no way should anybody have to beg you to come to worship. Amen. God's been good to you. Better than you've been to yourself. <coughs> well, we use these little old excuses, brethren. We use these little old excuses, right? Well, okay, well, I got this going. But well, don't you know God gave you the strength to have that going? Y'all see it? Don't put the cart before the horse. Because God can bless you. And God can curse you. And he will bless obedience. And he will curse disobedience. Because he's a holy God. Amen. If we can help you this morning, won't you come as we stand and sing the song of invitation? I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 2,000 to my soul.
tribulations. Thankful God's carrying me through. Amen. I thank Him for, and I thank Him even though. Amen. Praise the Lord, Mickey. She said, "I feel Him surrounding me with this love, and I want to. I want to decrease, in Him increase. Isn't that what we all should want? Amen. A little of me and all of Him. Bless you, Mickey. You keep seeking Him, sister. You keep." a lot he's giving you because that's what shaped you. Anybody else want to say thank you? Thank, thank you. you. See, sometimes you all we just get so sophisticated in church. We can't even say thank you. We can't even sing praise. Brethren, we're going into a new season. Chandler Road. We're going into a new season. And we're going to be more grateful. Amen. Uh, but Zane, if you would, brother. Shall we pray? Our dear Lord, we, we want to thank you for Mickey, first off. Thank you for her love. Thank you for the things that, uh, her example, the idea that, uh, uh, she wants more of you and less of her and we we come praying that that you'll help her to gain that help her to gain gain uh, uh, what she's looking for help her to uh, enjoy you we pray for the church that uh, that beats here at Chandler Road that, that you'll help us uh, all to be grateful all to be uh, uh, enjoy you enjoy our time at worship, enjoy our, our singing, our uh, everything that we're attempting to do here at Chandler Road. We pray that you'll bless us in it. We, we pray that you'll teach us to uh, be happy even when it fails. We pray that uh, you'll continue to give us grace, continue to give us love in Christ's name.
Thank you, God. Thank you for, for your love, for your grace, and for your mercy, for your sending of your son, for his willingness to come and to die for us, Father, and for the hope of eternal life we have, Father, through that great gift. We thank you, Father, for all the blessings that you give us in our lives. We thank you for uh, the elders, for the deacons, for the, for the Sunday school teachers, Father, for all those who uh, work for the church to do your will. And thank you for Don and for his family. And we pray that you'll continue to uh, bless him. And uh, we thank you for the lessons that he brings to us, Father. Father, we're mindful of those that are on our sick list, for those that uh, have been mentioned, and for those that are in the mind of these gathered here, Father, we pray that your healing hand would be upon them, that their health would be given back, Father. Be with us, Father, as we go throughout this week. Help us, Father, to be more thankful. Help us to be thankful through the adversities that we have in our lives, Father. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.